Hello again. So this is lecture three, part one. So there's going to be two parts in which we're going to talk about multiplication in part one and division in part two. Multiplication uh, is really addition. In fact, everything we do in math it all kind of boils down to addition in some form or way. So multiplication is repeated addition. What we mean by that? Let's say, for example, we see 3 times 5. And of course, we have 10 billion ways we can write 3 times 5. You may see it as 3 times 5, where you have a little dot. And it's not so little, but it's a dot in between the two. Or you might see, and this is a personal favorite of all the students, the parentheses. 3 times 5, in which between the parentheses, if there's no operation written, it's implied to be multiplication. What this means to us is we have three sets of, and of is a beautiful word, usually means multiplication for us, of 5. So I have 5 hearts in a box, and I have three sets of those 5. So I have a box, here's 5 hearts in there, and another one, and another one for a total of three sets of five in each one. And if I wanted to torture you, which I do, I'm going to count all the total hearts to find what three times five is. So I got one, two, three, four, five, gasp, right? Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and last but not least, 15. So that means to us three times five is 15. Now, the cool thing about multiplication, and I know you're probably thinking, cool in math, that doesn't happen. It does. We can have multiplication done in any order, and it's still the same result. So when we have 5 times 3, which we can write as 5 and then that little dot, 3, or we can write the horrible way with the parentheses, 5 times 3, we still have 5 sets of 3 which means something different to us. So here's my three hearts and I have five sets of them. But when I add them all up, when I add each individual heart, I still come up with 15. And now I would normally torture you in class, but for sake for time, I'll let you count the number of hearts and trust me when I say five times three is in fact 15. Now, this is going to boil down to how well you know your multiplication tables. There are many tricks out there to memorize your multiplication tables. There's tricks with your fingers for the nines multiplication tables. Um, I actually have another one where you have six through 10 on your fingers that I will show you in class. Um, or you just purely memorize them through flashcards or repetition. Do what you need to know to know your multiplication tables one through 12. I expect you to know how to multiply 1 through 12. Please do that. Now, let's talk about properties about multiplication. And this is one of our first properties that we experienced here. 3 times 5 is the same as 5 times 3. That is called commutative law. Commutative law says we can multiply in any order. So A times B is the same as B times A. For example, 3 times 5 is the same thing as 5 times 3, which we already experienced. 3 times 5 is 15. 5 times 3 is 15. And 15 does, in fact, equal 15. So that is commutative law. You can switch the order of the multiplication and still get the same answer. Associative law is a little bit different. Now, you're not changing the place of the multiplication for those pieces that we're multiplying together, um, like A and B, they stay in the same order, A, B, C, A, B, C. But what does change is the parentheses. This tells us the order in which we multiply. It's still the same idea. The order doesn't matter when we multiply. Commutative law says you can actually change the placement. Associative law says you can either multiply the last two together or the first two together. It still doesn't make a difference as long as all the operations going on between them is that multiplication. And that's what I'm drawing the arrow for. There's a dot, there's a dot, there's a dot, there's a dot. To see an example of this, 
and let's be nice to ourselves. We'll pick easy numbers. Let's say two times three times four. And I want to know, and I'm writing a little question mark above my equal sign, saying I'm not sure. If two times three, if I do that first, times four is the same result. The parentheses are telling us who we do first. So the parentheses here are telling me, do these guys together, three times four, I know my multiplication tables very well, and hopefully you guys got that one down too, is 12. And we now have 2 times 12, which gets us 24. Now let's go over to the other side. So we're looking at the right-hand side. We have 2 times 3. That's what we're going to do first because he's in parentheses. 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 times 4 is in fact 24 as well. And 24 equals 24, so it checks out. That is associative law, telling us in any order we can do it. All right, these laws, while I'm not partial to quizzing you on vocab, will be something you want to know frontal lobe. So make sure you got them down. There's a couple more out laws out there that we're going to slowly accumulate. The next thing we're going to do is solve equations. So we did a little bit of guess and check work before. In fact, I'm going to do a little bit of guess and check work with these solving the equations. We'll come up with a concrete way, concrete way later. So the first one we got, 3x equals 9. And I made it nice, so it's the first problem we've ever seen. We've got to be nice. I'm telling you 3 times something gets me 9. And I want to know what that something is. Well, because I know my multiplication tables well, I can guess 3 times 2 is 6. Okay, that's not 9. That's not going to work. 3 times 3 is, hey, look at that, 9. So x must equal 3 because 3 times 3 is 9. You do have to write x equals. That is telling me you solved. x equals 3 is what we call a solution. So let's do another one. Let's say, I don't know, we got y times 15 equals 30. So what times 15 gets me 30? And you might already got it at the tip of your tongue. If I don't know, I can always try adding, right? 15 is not 30, so I know it's not 1. 15 plus 15, let's see, 5 plus 5 is 10, oh, look at that. Well, that's repeated addition. I have two sets of 15, so that means 2 times 15 is 30. So y must equal 2. Alrighty. Last but not least, let's go ahead and try this one. Let's say I have 75 equals z, and that's my crazy z, sorry about it, times 25. So, I know my result, my ending thing, is 75. In fact, let me give you a little bit of vocab. 75 is what we call the product, which is the fancy word for the result of multiplication. So the product is 75, and z times 25 gets me that answer. Well, we can guess 25. I always think of it as a quarter because I see change in money. That's how my brain thinks. And I think how many quarters, so how many 25 cents, gets me 75 cents. And you would tell me quickly, because you are pros at money, and that's a horrible cent, is three quarters, right? I need three 25s. So Z must be three. And sure enough, three times 25 gets us that. So let's practice that, because now we've gotten over more than one digit. When we multiply more than one digit, we start with the second place here, 3, and we multiply it to each digit. So 3 times 5 is 15. 3 times 2 is 6. I'm sorry, I didn't do that right. Crazy woman on deck. Uh, 3 times 5 was 15, and I forgot the most important part. I placed the 5, and I carry the 1. 
3 times 2 is 6 plus the 1 is, oh, there we go. Now we got the right answer. We need more practice with that, especially if I'm screwing up. So let's multiply more digits. So our directions are going to say multiply. And let's just get a scary number. I don't know, 3,025 times, I don't know, 13. When we multiply more than one digit times anything, first off, we got to know our 1 for 12 tables, or else this is going to suck. So once we got those down, we tackle digit by digit. So I'm going to start into ones, and I'm going to multiply 3 to each digit in the number above. Now 3 times 5, I'm coming a pro at it, it's 15. Carry the 1. 3 times 2 is 6. And then I add the carry, which gets me 7. Now I didn't have any carry, so I just continue on. 3 times 0. Ooh, I sniff a rule coming on. Anything times 0 when we multiply. 0 times anything, let's say x, is just 0. And because of commutative law, anything times 0 is still 0. The order doesn't make a difference. So 3 times 0 is 0. And 3 times 3 is 9. Now that was the 1's place. We are now going to graduate into the tens place. When we land ourselves in the tens place, we have to understand we're multiplying by 10. 10 times 5 would be 50. So to make note of it down here, we're going to add a placeholder so that we are now aware we are in the tens place. And that's my placeholder. It's a 0. I got a little crazy with it. 1 times 5 is 5, right? Now you can see the 50 where that's appearing from. 1 times 2, now be careful if you need to scribble off any carries that you had. 1 times 2 is still 2. 1 times 0, anything times 0, rule says, is 0. So we got 0. And 1 times 3 is 3. Actually, that was pretty nice. I think I have another rule. We said whenever we multiplied 1 times anything, we ended up with that thing. Or anything times 1 is still the same thing. So there's another cool rule that we have. 0 times anything is 0. 1 times anything is the same thing. Now, what do I do with these two digits? I add them. So we're going to take these guys, add them up. 5 plus 0 is 5. 7 plus 5 is 12. Carry the 1. We're adding now. 1 plus nothing is 1 because we're adding. So be careful. I didn't add anything to 1, so it's still 1. Plus 2 is 3. 9 plus nothing is 9, and 3 plus nothing is 3. So now we have 39,325. And you don't need that comma there. It just helps me read it. And that's it for multiplication. I'm going to pound multiplication into you when we do our worksheets in class. So make sure you're ready. All right, until next time.